And God, amen, may the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom, now and up into the age all ages now. Today is the fourth Sunday of the blessed month of Tuba, and as we read um, the gospel of the healing of the man who was born blind, we also are probably familiar that we read this gospel another time of the year, the sixth Sunday or the last Sunday of Lent, right before uh, Palm Sunday. And as we have been saying, the theme of the month is also similar to the readings of the Great Lent, which have to do with baptism. <clears throat> and we call baptism uh, the sacrament or the grace in which we receive the spiritual eyesight, um, or the spiritual illumination, as the fathers call it. <clears throat> and that's why we, we read the gospel during this time as well. Uh, sometimes when people uh, are blind, they know. And sometimes people are blind in different ways and they don't know. There's different kinds of blindness, right? There's people who can't see anything. There's people who can only see a certain distance. Right? There's people who are colorblind, um, and there's people who don't have peripheral vision, and so on and so forth. And in the gospel of today, when we think of blindness, of spiritual blindness, many people say, yes, I am not blind anymore because I have been baptized. But oftentimes, one can see, but they don't see everything. One can know, but no one knows everything except for God. <clears throat> and so... As St. Augustine says, the whole world was blind. And Satan, his job is to blind us. Um, <clears throat> and that's why the Lord came um, and brought this clay to, to heal the blindness of the man. <clears throat> Another thing is that if you notice in the Gospel of today, what did the people say when they, they of course, they saw this event happening when he was walking probably hundreds of feet from one place to another? with clay on his eyes, and then he comes back. What was their reaction? It's actually an odd response. It says in the gospel here, they said, therefore the neighbors and those who previously had seen that he was blind said, isn't this he who sat and begged? And what was the response? Some people said, yeah, that's him. And other people said, no, it's not him. Why couldn't they tell because of his eyes? Maybe. <clears throat> um, but the idea here is that people couldn't recognize him anymore. Maybe not just because of the outward appearance, but also from the inward appearance. And so here God is trying to tell us when we come in contact with the divine God who reveals himself to us, we become changed. Um, <clears throat> and even some people say, like during the time of... Uh, the, the crucifixion of the Lord right before when they were in Gethsemane, right? And Judas came with, with the soldiers. Why did they need to point out who the Lord was? Because he was out and about teaching and preaching. Some people say it's because after spending years with the Lord, the disciples began to start looking like the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, <clears throat> and even some Coptic iconographers in the tradition of the church to maybe to venerate St. Mark, um, the founder of our church, they, they portray him almost identical to Christ. Of course, without, how, how can you tell the difference in the icons if there's, let's say there's an icon of St. Mark and an icon of Christ? It's actually easy to tell. Side note, the, the cross in his halo, right? That's always, only Christ has that. <clears throat> but the idea here is that when we become closer to Christ and live with him and he reveals himself to us, we reflect his image and his light and we become children of the light. Um, <clears throat> and, and this idea of, of change and permanent change and transformation is, should be a, a reminder all, always in our life. Am I different? Have I changed? Um, am I changing or for the good or, or not? One time, I think I mentioned this story before, one time St. Augustine was walking down the road after he had his uh, lifelong transformation, which you could read in the Confessions, which is a very beautiful book. <clears throat> um, so he met someone that knew him in his old way of life. And, and uh, she was a sinner. She 
she stopped and said, Augustine, Augustine, he, he actually walked right by her, didn't even look in her direction. Um, and she, she stopped and said, Augustine, Augustine, it is I. He said, yes, but it is not I. I'm different. I, I'm, I'm changed. I'm not the guy that you, that you knew me to be in the past. I, I'm someone else. <clears throat> so I think we need to have that reminder in, in, um, before us when, when we evaluate ourselves and our spiritual growth and ha have I been transformed or not? And like once someone, let's say, um, uh, gets healing of their eyes, right? They can't see and then they correct their vision. It's still possible to be blinded again, maybe not in the same way. So, <clears throat> um, but the, the idea here is, like St. Paul says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. So this is the change that we have. What are the childish things that we have put away? And what are the childish things that we still have um, in our life? Um, <clears throat> so when the eye gets open spiritually, it looks at things differently, right? Um, your world and you yourself are turned upside down. Um, you don't listen to the same music. You don't keep the same company. Um, you, you relax in, in different ways, right? All, all of these things <clears throat> are actually different than what the world, the world runs after one thing, but the transformed Christian who, who sees now clearly, runs the opposite direction, right? Um, the world is focusing on one thing, and the Christian is the opposite. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this, is, this is the objective of all of us. Am I in the same direction as the world, or I'm against the world? Um, <clears throat> it's, it's okay to be against the world. Right? The same Athanasius who wrote the beautiful story of, of St. Anthony, um, was fighting a, a very difficult battle when it came to the faith. Um, so much to the point where people say, Athanasius, the world is against you. Fine, I'm against the world too. Why? Because I have Christ. If I have Christ, I have everything. I don't need um, the, the things of the world. <clears throat> so today Christ says, I am the light of the world. When we are baptized into his death and his resurrection, we carry his light inside of us. And that's why we become, in a sense, um, the light of the world too. Um, St. Anthony, who we commemorate today, he was called, what, the lamp of monasticism. He, he bore that light in himself, but it gave, gave light to so many other people and, and his disciples who, who gathered around him. <clears throat> and he's a kind of a very good example of how God works with someone who submits their whole uh, life to God. <clears throat> the more he followed the light, the more he became a child of light, and he became father of children of light as well. Um, so the question is, have I changed? Um, do, have I noticed the difference in my life from, not before baptism for most of us because we were baptized at a young age, but when I came to really see God and know him and, and witness to this true life. Um, back in the day, as many of you know, um, the, the early Christians uh, had a deep impact on the world, so much that even the non-Christians noticed. And not only did they notice, but when they interacted with the other non-Christians, they could tell. So you look different today. Uh, did, did you meet a Christian? Um, because you're acting and you're looking, you're different, right? So if, if the Christians had so much impact, not just on the other Christians or on themselves, but on the non-Christians, so much that their, their friends could tell, then, then where am I in, in, in this picture? Um, do I seem different? I should feel different than, than those who are not close to Christ. Not that I'm comparing, but at least from before I knew him to now I know him, there should be difference. Even if I know him now, but we should be going from glory to glory. We should be advancing. St. Anthony was great is because he never stopped growing. He always took one step um, further in his spiritual growth. And, and uh, it's, it's like, you know, when you're building uh, a structure um, with the intent of it being a tower, you just keep going one level after another. Sometimes you build the foundation, say, this is good, this is strong. But that's not the end of the story. Until our last breath, we should be growing in Christ. And 
and uh, improving day by day. It's not by our power, but by allowing God to make that uh, transformation in us. <clears throat> because we say, Lord, open the eyes of my heart that I may see the wonderful things of your love. <clears throat> so um, instead of making excuses, we pray. We ask him to make that change in us. Um, the last thing is just contemplate a little bit on the clay that, that the Lord anointed his eyes with. <clears throat> and the fathers and the evangelists used this word anointed intentionally um, to, to point us um, to, to what this clay means. There's actually more than one explanation. Anyone know what the clay refers to? Symbolizes... <coughs> Yeah. So the first one is, well, um, how did he make the clay? You know, um, he spat on the ground and, and with, with the dust and, and his spittle, it was transformed into clay. People say this sounds disgusting, but back in the day, this was common um, understanding of, of the medicine of that day to have some medicinal um, or uh, healing properties, like with oil as well. Who knows, maybe in the future, research will show that they were right. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> but the fathers say he could have used water. But, and and the, uh, the man went to the pool, right? But, but why did it need to be something that came out of his mouth? Because what comes out of the mouth of God? His word, right? So, and how did he create the world? He spoke, right? Um, and who is Christ? The Logos, the word of God. Um, <clears throat> so... Um, we need the word of God, but it wasn't just the spittle only. Why did he use the ground? Because that's us, right? <laughs> he used humanity, and he infused humanity with his word, and he gave that word power, right? So God's word is powerful, but our hearts need to interact and to open up to, to hear his word and to live his word. And that clay is, is, is the power. Same thing with the sacraments, right? That's the second example of the sacraments, <clears throat> right? Because just like in the creation, what happened? There was a mist that went up from the earth in Genesis 2, 6. A, a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground, and the Lord God formed man of the dust. So there was a mist. Some people say it was the Holy Spirit, right? Because <coughs> the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And there was the dust of the ground, right? And then he breathed into his nostrils, um, the breath of life, and man became a living being, right? So here is the union of heaven and earth, the union of spirit and body, the, the union of um, the spiritual and the physical, right? Um, <clears throat> and so in the sacraments, we have the same thing. We don't just have spiritual, but manifest, infused in physical things, like the water of baptism, like the bread and wine on the altar, like the oil of, of the unction, um, like the crowns um, and the rings in marriage. So this is a, a powerful concept that we can just contemplate on further uh, at another time, but the union of heaven and earth is happens when we meet God, right? And even further than that, the last explanation of this play is Christ himself, because he is the epitome of the union of heaven and earth, of God and man, right, as we know. And so um, through Christ, we get this healing. Um, through the sacraments, we get this healing. Through his word, we get this transformation. Um, <clears throat> so um, another one of the fathers said, um, I think it's St. John Chrysostom, he said that this blind, blind man um, represented the image of the whole entire human race. Why? Because he was there, right? And the word took flesh, like we, we were just saying, the incarnation, and the whole world had was illumined <clears throat> and so um this is uh, what what we seek if we feel that we can't see we know where to go we have the word of god we have the sacraments we have the lord god with us at all times <clears throat> i just leave you with one last story and i'm sure i've said it before of, of saint anthony um is is uh again god was working powerfully in saint anthony because he submitted himself um wholeheartedly to God at all times. <clears throat> but uh, so much that the devils were envious and they struggled uh, and failed 
to put out his light and the lamp of monasticism. So they tried many different things. They tried fighting with mental warfare um, by, by tricking him. It didn't work. They tried with the, the lusts of the world by, you know, even one time they get, get brought a very um, expensive, shiny dish, you know, as he was walking in the desert. He, he prayed and it turned to smoke because he realized it was the trick of the devil. Um, so they gave up to the point, they, the only thing that they could do was beat him up physically, um, as, as we read in, in the uh, cynic's heart of today. And then they brought him to the church. He was unconscious, so when he came to, he did what? He went right back to, to, to where the devil fought him. Um, <clears throat> this is the determination of, of the lamp of Manassas. And then he called out to them, here I am, Antony, do whatever you want to do. Um, <clears throat> I will not leave this place. And uh, sure enough, um, the devils came again trying to, uh, to, to tempt him or to scare him with different images of beasts and whatnot. And then a light, the roof opened and the light came from, from heaven and the devils were dispersed. <clears throat> then Anthony thought he could speak freely to God. He said, God, where were you? <laughs> Don't you see what, what's happening? Like, I, they're beating me up now. Uh, <clears throat> and so uh, God responds and says, Anthony, uh, I saw you. I was with you, but I waited to see your struggle. So we need to, to recognize this um, and in our spiritual life. It's like we're struggling. God sees us. Sometimes we say, God doesn't, God doesn't see me. He doesn't know me. He doesn't care. But no, he does. Um, and he sees every struggle, um, but he's waiting to see what, what you do in it. And he, he will give you the strength if you ask for it. He will give you more faith, um, but he has already given you enough to endure the, the temporary struggle. Um, and then he wants you to look back and say, yes, he was with me and he will be with me. <clears throat> uh, I don't think St. Anthony make the same mistake twice because we don't read about it in his story. Um, <clears throat> he didn't need another reminder that God was with him um, because probably even the, the demons did not tempt him as much as, the, as they did in that beginning time. <coughs> Just like when we read in the uh, Gospel of Temptation in, in a couple of months, uh, after the Lord succeeded in, in the various trials and temptations, it said the, the devil left him for a time, right? So, so this is our, our, our goal is just to open our eyes, not only to see the things of God, but to remind us of the power of God and how it compares to the temptations and the trials and the struggles that are before us. May the God of grace give us this uh, illumination in, of our minds and of our eyes and of our hearts and glory be to the from the age of Blessed are the...